Welcome to the Impersonal Opinion Podcast. I am your guest host, Monique Lukens. So happy to be with you, along with our other co-hosts. Chandler Klebs. George Ortega. Jamie Soden. Chuck Slattery. WNT Top. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and our topic for this show is post-election predetermination for president. Now, uh, and of course, this is the United States. We had our general election November 8th, 2016. In fact, probably there are still votes coming in that haven't been counted, the mail-in ballots. Some of them will be counted. Some of them won't due to mathematical formulas. But Uh, as it stands right now, uh, the country is calling Donald J. Trump the president-elect. Can I please have a all oh, from everyone. Yeah, that's horrible. Oh. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, this is because uh, Trump has um, more promised electoral electoral votes uh, than Clinton, of course. Although Hillary Clinton has the popular vote. She has the popular vote by a a few million, I believe, now. Now, in third place, actually, is Bernie Sanders. This is so sad because had Trump not gotten the 270 electoral votes, then um, neither him or Hillary, if she didn't manage to get the 270 either, wouldn't have been called the president-elect, and then the House would have decided between the top three candidates, which would have then been Trump, Clinton, and Sanders, since he was in third place with all his write-in votes. Um, And I want to mention that he received more write-in votes ever uh, in the history of um, the U.S. uh, elections. He he received more write-in votes than third parties combined. I know that the Green Party was hoping to get 5% of the um, of the popular vote because they would have been given $10 million for the Green Party, uh, which is maybe why um, Jill Stein is heading a recount now in three swing states. I'm not sure which ones they are. I think Pennsylvania may be one. But anyway... Mm. Uh, on December 19th, 2016, will be the final decision of the Electoral College. And uh, as it stands right now, a few of them have stated that they will change their mind. Um, and and if, in some cases, they will have to pay pen, a penalty for that. Now, as, as some of you know, I w- was and, and I'm still a part of the Bernie think tank we called ourselves BernieVote.com. We are people on private Facebook groups and a couple other online groups that are doing our best to get the electors to change their mind to Bernie Sanders. I know there's people that are trying to get uh, votes to be changed to Hillary Clinton. In fact, Change.org has a petition out, and I believe there's 4 million, if not more, Um, asking the electors to make Clinton the president due to her getting the popular vote. Our stance for the Bernie people are, and this completely goes with the show, (laughs) if you believe in free will or not, but um, we are stating that the American voters, many of them could not vote according to their own free will of the candidate of their choice because of the fraud at the DNC, the Democratic National Convention, which is on record from WikiLeaks that they terribly made every possible effort to debunk Bernie from becoming the candidate. And if you watched the DNC at your television or computer, you could see that Bernie got over a three-minute standing ovation, sincere applause. He had to keep saying, thank you, 
Thank you. I, I totally suggest that you put in Bernie Sanders uh, standing ovation DNC and YouTube, and, and you'll see what I mean. Compared I to it. what Hillary got when she was doing her speech. Yeah. Also, it stated that there were people that were paid to sit there during her speech, and many of the Bernie delegates <clears throat> left, and some of them who were outside protesting wanted to come in, and their seats had been um, taken over by these paid people for Hillary. Now, I wasn't there, but I did see some pictures that definitely look like <laughs> there was <laughs> something going on there. Um, so anyway, we ourselves have a petition. Uh, if you go to returntheburn.com, you can find it, returntheburn.com. And there is there is a possibility for us to change the electors' minds, but most people are kind of set now that Trump is going to be the president and they've they've lost all hope and they're just kind of going with it. And I hear a lot of people saying, well, let's just make the best that we can. And yeah, that's a good philosophy, but it's also good to have some effort to, to, to try to make a change. And whether you believe in free will or, or not, we all can agree that the only way to make a change is to put some some muscle behind it, legal muscle, of course. So that's what we're going to talk about, our, our opinions on how the election turned out, what we can do. Should we just roll with the punches or should we try to do something even if it doesn't work out? Because many people say that politics, you know, politics are just politics and we really don't have any control over it. So guys, with everything that I've said and other things that you would like to add, please be my guest. All right, Monique, let me address, like, you know, I agree with you. The DNC basically favored Hillary, and and had they not, um, Sanders might have been our, our nominee. So that was unfair. The thing is, I'm not sure that was illegal. Um, you may want to, like, comment then on that later. But the other thing is, like, I sent you guys an email about this um, recently, basically, you have to this. There might have been fraud. In other words, like Trump might have won by tampering with the results. And the reason I say this is like, you know, as I mentioned in the email, um, exit polling is generally relatively accurate. It's sometimes, you know, off by, let's say, a couple of percentage points or so, but not much more than that. And um, and the reason that it, it's it's valid because like while polling before the election is conducted by phone, and a lot of people, for example, in this case, would have been in sh ashamed or embarrassed to say they were voting for Trump, and so maybe his his supporters were un undercounted. With with the exit polling after they've voted, you don't have that problem because not only is it completely anonymous. Um, they, these respondents are actually handed a piece of paper, so they're not even spoken to. They fill it out, they fold it, and they put it in a box. So, so basically, with, with some of these states, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, the, the shift between the exit polls and the actual votes is sometimes five, six points. And that, that is like the chance of that happening you know, by chance and not, you know, through some kind of tampering is like sometimes one in 800, one in, in uh, one in um, 1,500. So, you know, I'm convinced, you know, that there was tampering. And, you know, if, if Trump could be implicated, then, yeah, then maybe maybe we can get Hillary in and then Sanders agenda. You know, I'm not sure we can get Sanders in, but at least Sanders agenda could be really pushed to the forefront. Uh, George, I just want to make a couple quick comments. You're right. It's not illegal what the DNC did, it, even though it is fraud. But I believe what I was trying to make make a statement about is um, people are supposed to be able to vote according to their own free will. When we sign contracts, if we're in court, you know, we're always asked, are, are you signing according, you know, to your own free will and no one is making you do this. So that, that's what I mean. Um, uh, the, the second thing that I wanted to say is that Hillary actually conceded to Donald Trump. Um, but Bernie didn't. So there is another way possibly that we could get him in. 
So those are the two things that I wanted to say about that. Right, and one, one thing also with the concession, Monique, for example, like Gore had conceded back in 2000, but then you, it, that's, that concession is not legally binding. In other words, Hillary, Hillary can say, well, you know, like, um, now we've got evidence that, that Trump rigged the election, that he's implicated in, in this, you know, in tampering with the ballot boxes, so I withdraw my concession. Okay, well, that's great. I did not know that um, because... Oh, a, a few few years ago, I know this doesn't have to do with the elections, but there was a gentleman that was on death row and all of the witnesses that said that he was the one who murdered someone, they recant it except one person. And there was there was a petition for um, him to keep be kept alive. And there were like a million people that signed it and whatnot. And Obama was asked to help him. And I think the governor and, and in the end, even though this evidence was recanted, they killed him. <laughs> so I, I did not know that. Do you, does everybody remember that? I don't, it was in the South. Yeah, uh, no, I wouldn't doubt it. Obviously, yeah, there's so I just didn't that's... know if it could be recanted. Yeah, obviously, something is uh, going uh, down like dodgy, but I, d I wouldn't point the fingers at, um, like, well, Hillary, myself, I would uh, set up. Because uh, I obviously think something is going on with uh, the Hillarys and or the Clintons and all that, and obviously with the Bushes and all that. But with Donald, I don't know. I've got a, a very good suspicion that he hasn't done anything. I think it's probably up to something to do with the Russians, because there's been talks about the Russians getting involved, changing the election. So obviously... Uh, I mean, they could say, oh, well, we're pointing the fingers at the Russians and all that because they like Donald Trump. But um, he was having a go uh, the Russians about last time saying if they get involved or if anyone else gets involved in it, it's nothing to do with him. Um, Anthony, let me tell you something about Trump you may not know. Um, yeah. He just settled a $25 million lawsuit from people uh, who signed on to his Trump University because they were basically scammed. They paid $30,000 thinking they were getting something, and they didn't. But the larger part of this is that while he settled that, that lawsuit out of court with the $25 million, he's being yeah. sued right now by the New York Attorney General for bribing the Florida Attorney General not to investigate this, this um, Trump University case. And this, this, this case is ongoing. So this is, this is a guy who's not above at all trying to, like, you know— I mean, bribing uh, an attorney general, that's a federal offense. If this yeah. guy would do that. Well, that's why what they should do is do like another election, restart the flipping election, but get some actually decent people. And I don't, to be honest, people say, oh, Bernie Sanders is this good guy and that they should, he should win. But the thing is, they've all got their flaws. Every person they've been put in so far have got their flaws. And I think, to be honest, I think they're all working. I think the Illuminati are involved some way. And people say, no, people say, oh, well, what? the Illuminati don't um, like exist. But trust me, there's a higher um, corporation out there. They're actually brainwashing people into actually um, uh, rigging the elections and doing all the, uh, their bidding for them and all that. And the reason why we want Bernie Sanders to be the president of the United States is because he's the most qualified for the job. His policies actually make sense. I you know? said that. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. He makes up all these things, yeah. and then what he'd do is come into the election like, and mm. become the prime, uh, the, well, the president and all of that. Mm. And the um, thing is, like, doing something for the mm. people and then actually getting in and actually doing it is two different things. I see Anthony's point there, and yet... I, I don't know. I just think Bernie's a little bit more trustworthy than either Hillary or Trump. Trump. Yeah, well, everybody trusted flipping Hitler at one point, didn't they? And he killed all the Jews and all that. I mean, they, he was actually um, like a good general, apparently, at the start, and then started going crazy afterwards, and they all trusted him. And, yeah. But the thing is, Bernie Sanders is not, he's not the type of person who would kill you for having a different opinion, you know? Mm. No, but, yeah, no, so. but you know, you get what I mean. You know where I'm going for on this, though. I mean, you can't the first that nowadays. I'm sorry, Ed. I'm yeah. sorry. That's the first politician that I see. We're clean record. Clean yeah, record. I agree yeah, on that. Thing. Yeah, and besides, we know Bernie won't kill any Jews because he is one. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I'm not about like just Jews, like anyone and all that. In right. <laughs> personal. He won't. He doesn't even believe in capital punishment. So why is he going to kill anyone? Yeah, that's a very good sign right there. Um, 
Yeah. Um, see, I, ha- I have a few things to say unless somebody else wants to go first. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Ahead. Now, wh- while I tend to be ra- rather neutral when it comes to politics because I don't vote and necessarily support any candidate, there are two things I would like to say. First of all, you you guys all like Bernie, so I would like it if things turned around and Bernie got in because that's what you want. But even if not Bernie, I still feel that this whole um, electoral college system is complete nonsense, and therefore, if that if Hillary won the popular vote, then that implies that that's what the majority of people want, and I feel like people are told that they live in a democracy where the majority of people get what they want. And so since they they were promised a democracy, there should be democracy, and then at least Hillary should get in by, based on the popular vote because the whole electoral college thing is just nonsense. Yeah, I agree with Chandler. Right that noise. Well, yeah. sounds, sounds like somebody's washing the dishes. What's that? Is someone drilling for oil? Oh, my gosh, it's Standing Rock. Everybody stop. <laughs> I might be able to part of might be able to cut that part out. <laughs> we need, we need, we need to. Don't oh, cut my don't joke out. Outside. Seriously, we 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 need to talk about the Standing Rock um, situation okay. as well, though. Where's uh, that sound coming from? in this conversation, because Hello, Bernie's gone going, over hold there, hold and on, he um, he's like the only, okay. Hey, hey, first we need to, so, whoever that's coming from needs to mute their mic. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I know it's usually Here me, but it ain't me this time. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I wonder where oh, that was coming from. God, okay. Bernie's the only politician that has gone over to Standing Rock, so I know, and 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 standing strong with them. I mean, it's it's Native American land. They don't want their water poisoned. It's very basic. Huh? That sound. That's why I say somebody trying to grind steel or something. Yeah, it sounds like someone's mic's going a bit funny. Yeah, it's it might the Dakota be. Pipeline. That's what I'm talking about. So, sorry, that yeah, was um, but Bernie, I really feel Bernie is sincere and his the movement that he's created is so strong. It's with it's with politically minded, change oriented, conscious people. Not of course, not all of them are vegans. A lot of them are. But the people that are behind him are they're change oriented, too. I must say that the people behind Hillary and Trump, not so much, from, from what I can see, at least. Yeah, I think a lot of the Trump people wanted a change to happen. They just didn't want another politician in the office, especially one with, you know, that that seems like she has a corruption history, <laughs> even though, I, you know, I, I, I don't appreciate Trump either. But I think many of those people that voted wanted change. But Bernie's people truly yeah. feel sincere. I mean, gosh, all the volunteering that they've done and, I, I, I mean, okay, everybody vol- volunteered, but th- th- from what I can see, um, I, I also wanted to mention that George, you mentioned the the Trump University. I, I actually went to see him years ago. Trump and Tony Tony Robbins was there, motivating everyone. I remember that it was like. Thirty dollars or something through the or learning annex at, in Los Angeles, and of course he talked a good talk. A lot of these real estate people do, but really, do they ever deliver on their promises and whatnot? Nope. Are you making a lot of money? Usually not, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I've gone to other things. They give you food and and little gifts, and they want you to join an expensive program and whatnot. And the and the end, it's boot, mute your mic, trying James. to sell something. Sorry. So I don't know if, if he promised people. I don't. I really don't remember if he promised people. Then you just you can't promise people right. things. So, and 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 as far as those. Tw- 25 women that he all that he called liars that all went away mysteriously went away um he you know he probably settled with some of them too and we don't even know so money has a way of settling things mm-hmm. that's the problem Matter of fact, it sells too much i mean a guy who and at a rally would, would say to his supporters you know punch a protester in the face I'll, in the face i'll pay your legal fees I mean, the guy is, is he's vile, you know, he, he, the, he's not, a, you know, above doing anything. 
And more hate crimes have gone up since Trump has been president elect than you know, I mean it is really a shame what is happening. So we still have, like when, we have a chance to change. Still, yeah, still I, still like find it funny, Henry, I still though. find it funny that nobody saw through his bullshit. So if you think about Hillary though, apparently Oh Hillary sorry, excuse Clinton, my slang. Yeah, Hillary Clinton apparently sent some uh, of her fans over to uh, the Trumps uh, like people to start fights as well. So to be honest, there's no like good uh, people on either side and all that. It's like yes. it's going back both ways. But you've got to look yeah. realistically where you've got to come from. Who's going to take over as the president? I mean, if you think about uh, about six, 1960s and all that, probably the best uh, president of the United States was probably JFK until he got assassinated. But yeah. why did he get assassinated? It's probably because he was doing the right things for the right people and there's people out there who didn't like it. And apparently, according to a link that I picked up on Twitter, um, bullying went up in school ever since Trump got in. So, Los Angeles Unified School District actually put counselors in place for teachers and students um, yeah. that are scared due to Trump becoming president. I think it's more of the immigration thing that any than anything, but probably for females too. Or maybe he's just trying to toughen up the country because uh, then is America at the moment with Barack Obama and the people before him, uh, they're not really been that tough. I mean, they're, they're a bunch of wimps, to be honest, the ones who are in lead in the countries. You needed someone, you need someone who actually can do the country's work for it and help people rather than just sitting on their asses. Well, no, no, that's unfair, Anthony, because if you know American politics, the reason um, Obama hasn't been able to do as much as he could is because the Republicans in Congress won't allow him. And Obama can't do yeah. anything about that. Yeah, but that's the thing. He should take yeah, they keep blocking. all that. They keep blocking. He can't. Have the, you know, they have the, the seats. He, you know, there's nothing he can do. So why yeah, is he powerful, they keep blocking, then? Though. That's the thing. If you're in power and you're, uh, you've got yeah, all the power... Uh, it blocking. doesn't work like that, man. Because the majority of the senators in the United States are fucking Republican, man. That's the reason why his policies keep on getting blocked. Well, that's why the laws yeah. need to change, and... Yeah, well, of course, I think, the laws need to well, change. I, I agree think with you. That there. We can make a, they need a to good... make it tougher laws so that mm. the person who's actually in charge actually gets 99.9% of the actual um, charge of it, of the country, rather than just having, like, uh, I don't know, 20%, 5%. Anthony, that's scary. That's scary because imagine Trump with that power. You get some lunatic like Trump yeah, with that exactly. power, he would start a nuclear war. Yeah, what, what I'd like to say about that is because of the fact that the, the president doesn't have all of the power to do all these things because there is a, a, a system of the, of the Senate and House of Representatives and the Supreme Court and all that other, other stuff. I, I mean, I was taught about this stuff. I've forgotten a lot about it, but it's meant to be split up into three branches so that one person doesn't get too much power. And what I would say about that also is – these politicians should not really be making promises that they can't guarantee they'll be able to keep because it's not really you know, up to them in the legal sense. You know what I mean? And Taylor, I want to make mention to that, too. I, I, Trump has said many ugly things and, you know, he's starting to do some ugly things, but other things he's kind of casting aside. Um, although the, as they call themselves the deplorables, they're happy to call themselves that for some reason. Um, and, you know, th they are not happy that he decided not to investigate Clinton. I mean, I say just let whoever has to investigate, investigate. In some ways, it's probably better that he's not going after her because I think there's a lot of, there's enough hatred going on. But many people are, are, thinking that Trump just said all this stuff, and that's all this to stuff, to get elected. You know, it, it was yeah. all hype. It was, like, entertaining to an, mm. to an extent. I could you know you how that. all our eyeballs are on drama-related reality shows and whatnot, right? But sometimes these people aren't even like that in reality. Yeah, who's the real Donald but, Trump? But the, <laughs> but the thing is, Actually, what's wrong about it is it's really playing with honesty and American, you know, principles and to fake it or 
whatnot, just to get votes and eyeballs and whatnot, and then to be like completely different in the office, that's not right either. You know, you shouldn't have to play like that in order to be the president. Where Where is the integrity here? I mean, uh, I want to vote for somebody at face work, not like, mm -hmm. oh, they're like doing all this stuff just so that they could like turn around and then be different. Exactly. It, just That's like exactly Howard Stern, you know, people would say, oh, he's a really nice guy. Yeah. In the meantime, he was telling women, oh, take your take your shirts off and let me touch them. And oh, go <laughs> boink a porn, porn star. I mean, this was like disgusting stuff that was like, you know, really de debasing to, to people and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But yet people would be like, oh, he's a really he's different in person. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. But he put so many people down. And, and that's. I understand that entertainment is about people laughing and whatever and keeping the eyeballs on, but politics should not be this way. It's not entertainment. It's it's who's going to be your leader, you know? And if it's going to be more negative than positive for even in, for entertainment, I say I, I, I never listened to him. I mean, I just, going back to Stern. Oh, and speaking of Stern, look, Trump was on Stern's show and stuff. I mean, I feel like he's the same caliber. He's not the type of person that I want to lead my country, and that's how I feel. Well, absolutely, and I think we all agree with that, that, that there, there needs to be honesty. And, yeah, we can't trust any, anyone for sure. Like, I, I've developed a distrust of politicians in general because of the reputation for m making false promises, you know? And it's sort of like a, a good comparison is like these men who – make false promises to get women to marry them and, and then break all those promises and th then they find out that they're – these women find out that they're in an abusive relationship with this person that's not the person that they were believing they were. And that could be for women too that make promises. Yeah, so. and it goes the other way too. And yet for some reason it's more common where the men are lying. I'm not sure why that is. No, it's, a, it's actually about balance. It's just people report on uh, men more often than emails. So let's let's get into it. Yeah, but it does happen to men, though, as well. Like, men do get abused as well and all yeah, that. Yeah, it happens a lot more often than you think. It just don't get reported as much. Yeah. Rick, mute, uh, no, uh, Jamie, mute your mic. Uh, sorry. Actually, what I was thinking as well, I mean, what would uh, it happen for you guys and girls, right, to change your mind about Trump, I mean, if he wanted to come in? I mean, say he made the best pri uh, well, president of the United States. I yeah, mean, I'll take, yeah, I'll take back no, my no, word. Still, he's still yeah, I'll take it back, president. but I'm going like, to tell you this. Oh, the, sorry, the things he said in the campaign, the things he said about women, you know, mocking a disabled reporter. No, you don't want somebody in the presidency, regardless of how much good he, he does. And he spread pseudoscience like about the measles vaccine as well. He claimed that MMR vaccines caused autism and public, you know what I mean? It's and that's just, false. Let's get disrespect of people. Has, you know, let's get realistic yeah. on, on, uh, on what, you know, what can really happen here because, you know, I don't think... And he claimed it, climate it, change is a hoax or all that bollocks, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, he says so. it's a complete bunk, basically. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Trick. So, let, yeah, let's get realistic on what can ha happen here, because I don't think Sa like Sanders Sanders isn't a possibility. Let's just let's just admit it. The, we have we have basically there's one possibility that of of Trump not getting in, and that's if uh, Jill Stein is able to show that that uh, you know do a recount, and the, that recount turns up to be Hillary. That that's the only possibility. The electors aren't aren't going to switch their no vote. or fraud or fraud. Well, 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 fraud, fraud will get him impeached, but but then it'll just re no, 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 to fraud before he becomes president. If if he can be demonstrated to have tampered with the elections, that's a that's yeah, a yeah, yeah federal right, right. Crime. If he, yeah, if he could be if he could be demonstrated to tamper the election, then then yeah, it would revert to Hillary at that point. So it's never going to revert to Sanders. Um, and, and if 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 he gets you know if he uh, if he gets impeached due to the whole uh, thing that you talked about, George, then. With the um, what is it? What, what was the thing? You were oh, talking the, about? the the uh, uh, the attorney general um, bribing the attorney general. Attorney general. Yeah, was, yeah, th those type of things. So if he gets impeached, then it's going to revert to Pence, who's even worse than Trump. Sure. So, so th that's that's the actually the worst case situation. We don't want that happening because Pence is like, he's he's a crazy. He's he's uh, crazy. That really guy is nuts. insane. So, so yeah. So Trump is actually better than him, believe it or not. Um, so, so, 
so Sanders isn't going to happen. Uh, there's a slim don't chance. Don't say that, that 100. percent Do not uh, say it, that 100. percent it's, it's there's, there's a 99 percent chance no, that won't there's happen. There's no realistic scenario that it that it can happen. Like, but, but to be honest, if they resetted the election and had it anyway, oh, Donald would get back in again, no matter what. So I mean, it it'd win it uh, the second time round. Actually, but no, I, like a trick, for example. I mean, like in this election, you can't count on anything. Let's say like Hillary gets really sick or dies or something, and Trump gets. <laughs> A crime Sanders is in no yeah, no, yeah. No, maybe not I don't know here's a thought guys like although I don't expect this to happen if there was like a, a whole redoing of the whole election starting from scratch where everybody has to vote all over again and all that yes let's suppose yes. This that not happened yeah, we, but it's a good I believe that if yeah, okay. L listen, okay. I believe that if that happened, we would get possibly a different result because you know what? People change. New things they see may change their opinions about all of the candidates, and so they may vote differently the second time than they did the first oh, time. It's a possibility. Definitely. Yes. definitely. Like, like, I think Sanders would have yes. a huge, way greater chance because the whole – email scandal that came out with Hillary and all that stuff that came out later, right? That was after Sanders was already out. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so that's the problem there, but, but that's never going to happen. You're, you're not going to get, you're not going to ever get a revote. That's, that's just, it's just not a realistic situation. Um, and, 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 and electors have never, have yet to ever go against, uh, the electoral vote. So they, 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 they've never gone against, the electoral college votes. So, so the chance of that happening is is almost nil. Uh, you know, them changing, you know, changing their vote to Hillary or something else. Well, and so that's not there are happen. a few that say they will. There are yeah, a few. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's it's never happened, and it's it's it's. Well, this never a, happened a, either. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Well, yeah, but it's, it's, it's such a slim better. chance. That, but there. You know, it's still, the only the only thing we, I that I would hinge hope on is if Jill Stein is able to do a recount and that recount actually does, you know, convert to uh, Hillary. That that would be the main thing I think that could cause the uh, cause a, a change. Can you here. all tell me why Jill Stein is doing this? Because I didn't look into it. Like I said, I know that if she got five million, uh, I'm sorry, five percent of the popular vote, she would have got in 10 million for the green party and i think she only got like one percent of of the vote um, I, I just want to men i want to mention this really quick because a lot of the bernie people went over to the to jill stein when bernie said he was going to be going with clinton and then when we popped up with our right in movement um there were a lot of people that were very angry at us uh, in the green party and seriously, cursing us, saying that what we were doing wasn't true, voting right in votes wouldn't count. I mean, they didn't count in some states, but in, in others they did. And in and in some states it was really okay if it wasn't like a swing state and it wouldn't make Trump win. But right. they they really turned. I, I mean, I was really surprised that the caliber of people that I thought would be for Jill Stein and the Green Party were just r really abrasive and it, it, it was really sad to me um i also read in the daily beast so i don't know if this is true i didn't go through jill stein's books but apparently a lot of her own personal um investments go against what she talks about in the green party you know she's all about clean energy and whatnot and some of the things like she's personally invested in to get money for herself you know retirement or whatever is is not in alignment with her party and look i understand she's of an older generation and maybe it's not so easy to switch around things and whatnot but i do feel that if she's running for the green party she's representing that and she should have changed around her portfolio so i want to mention that but does anybody know why she is doing she's wanting the recount I instead of guess. somebody else Monique, I could guess. I mean, basically, if she weren't on the ballot in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, and if she didn't endorse Trump over Hillary, because she did, she said Trump is whatever, but Hillary is dangerous and capital letters, you know, 
if she wasn't, uh, Hillary would have won. So she may be feeling some profound guilt. Mm. Actually, what's the worst thing that could happen to Hillary over Christmas is choke on a turkey uh, bone or something. And then no, <laughs> Donald Trump gets arrested for fraud and all that. My God. I mean, you better all help. Hillary should have gone fingers. vegan. Will, Her daughter is vegan. Do oh, that's interesting. That happens. Now, you better cross all your fingers that it happens and all that. So all I, you, will um... do, I will literally do that. <laughs> anyway, she claims she's just doing it because she wants an honest... Uh, election so that that's, well, her, that's what you know her, her picture claim. has been jill stein's picture has been taken off the official green party website so i'm not really sure what's going on now nah, you know what's happened it's the fucking illuminati involved <laughs> <laughs> there anthony goes again with the they're illuminati turn, they're turning oh, all those little mate. votes and stuff against it so donald trump wins come on man well, you we want need to, to get George like, Norrie in on this, on this conversation. George Norrie um, of Coast to Coast. Something that has come up that, like, I didn't know, I don't think people in general have known this, which is, like, that our democracy runs like this is bizarre. Basically, the, the companies that, that manufacture these voter machines, right, yep. you know, they don't have to turn over the results to the government, to anyone. That's insane. Yeah. You have, like, private companies basically in charge of the voting machines you know that that that's beyond bizarre so, so like, of course the they can manipulate the results to whatever they want isn't that right well, yes George? somebody bribes uh, an executive there and absolutely yeah like donald trump comes there with his big bucks and all that starts throwing a few of his little notes around hundred dollar bills and then starts making them change their votes well, this is exactly what Jet Fresco means when he says it's not a democracy. I mean, how can it be a democracy yeah, when oligarch. votes get manipulated, you know? Actually, what about all that money that to Hillary uh, tried yeah. to uh, get given yeah. to her by other countries? I mean, that's kind of a bit dodgy, isn't it? So, yes. I mean, they both need to be checked out, to be honest. All right, but Anthony, I mean, you can't equate... Hillary's crimes with Trump's. I mean, Trump and like there's like there's a level. I mean, he's so vile. He's he's he was like he was consulted with the security um, national security expert, and three times during the interview he asked the the this this um, foreign policy expert. You know, we've got these nuclear weapons. We can't use them. Can't we use them? I mean, the guy like you know. Hillary is a saint compared to Trump. You can't really equate them. They're Even very, though I would not they say oh, consider, because Trump, consider, considering listen, that Anthony. she started uh, World War and all that, she's trying to start Anthony. a war in, that. Yeah, in Anthony, the Middle listen. East. Yeah. Donald, Donald Trump is a xenophobic, he's a xenophobic maniac, right? Because he threatened to kill Eastern uh, civilians um, just for being family members of ISIS. You know what I mean? Just because they happen to be family members of criminals, uh, you know, he wants them bumped off, don't he, George? You know? So, yeah. Yeah, Trump is the KKK uh, he, endorsed him, I believe. I don't yeah. think he had anything to say. I mean, if you guys were being endorsed by the KKK, what would you do? Would uh -huh. you speak out about it? I'd, that's like, of course, what? I'd be like, well, what? We <laughs> what happened? Because we're normal people, aren't we? So, yeah, Trump is a socio sociopath. He's there's there's ser something seriously wrong with him. Yeah, he's yeah, what so, about a xenophobic maniac, dude. So, yeah, yeah, but the thing is, though, what about, like, Hillary to do with Iraq about starting wars and all that in there? Because she's apparently getting money to fund for, like, terrorism. So, technically, she's working with, like, the ISIS. That's what they've been saying about her. <laughs> you, you can't, you know, yeah. this stuff is coming from the right-wing media. You can't buy that mm. stuff. These, these people lie. They were denying climate change. You can't accept anything that's coming from them as truth. Pretty much. Yeah, I'm actually working with listen, ISIS. I mean, listen. come on. <laughs> Anthony, listen. Yeah, hey, wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. At, at least Hillary Clinton admitted that climate change is real on Twitter. You know what I mean? Did you see that post that she made a while back? She yeah, admitted. Yeah, she admitted it's happening, whereas Trump says it's a hoax. So I would say Donald Trump is worse based on that fact alone, because climate change is a very serious problem. If we don't deal with it, Anthony, then millions to billions of people will suffer in the future. So. Well, no, she she's admitted to it because think. she'd be off anyway uh, to another like planet soon. Anyway, she's probably got a rocket underground oh. ready to like. Fuck <laughs> with no, Mars. no, and we don't have and we don't have that much time, dude. We don't. No, no, we don't. But they do. The government, the ones who are actually the higher powered and all that, they got all and, these big technology underground. And regardless. <laughs> Regardless of their wealth, right, 
climate change can still affect them. It could still have a negative negative impact even on the rich because our of food course. supplies will dwindle to nothing. So it, actually, Jamie, it's more than that. The, the mm. biggest, like, the rich people of the world think, you know, mm. like, all right, they're not going to be threatened by climate change because they can just move themselves and their families and their grandkids and all to regions mm -hmm. of the planet that are relatively unaffected. What they're not yeah. taking into account is because yeah. of, like, jet travel in this world, you know, you can mm -hmm. have a pan pandemic, an infectious disease mm -hmm. that starts in Africa and just, like, spreads to the entire world, and these rich are powerless to, to defend either themselves or their family against that. Exactly, because I don't have a scientific research to deal with, like, the diseases that keep on multiplying, mutating, and all that stuff, you know? So, yeah. Speaking yeah. of scientific yeah. research, why does it seem like the Republicans are so against it in many other areas? For instance, a few years ago, although many Republicans did turn on this man, mm. um, he was a Republican who said this. Do you remember... Someone said that if a woman gets raped, her body shuts down and she usually won't get pregnant. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. I mean, that was the most idiot statement I ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Does anybody oh, remember that? Is nobody to believe that they need to watch like, Precious, it sounds, yeah. the movie. Because yeah, yeah, yeah actually, I remember. Half of those people have, like... Evan evangelicals, you know, they believe that there was an Adam and Eve 6,000 years ago. They just like, they're, they're completely out there. Why have the Republicans mixed in with evangelical Christianity? It's completely ruined Christianity in this country as far as I'm concerned, which is supposed to be based upon compassion. Now, I'm not saying that this should be a free-for-all, but it just seems like they're so against certain things that don't even make sense. And Mon Mon so even with the 6,000 years, them believing it, I still don't understand how they can say no to most of science. The reason they do that is because of abortion. You know, and again, like I, you know, like I've been pro-choice in a certain sense because I, I believe in democracy, but I, I think abortion is wrong. And like so many of these, these voters, they believe that the Republicans will end abortion when the Republicans have absolutely no intention of ending it because if they ever did, all those voters would all of a sudden shift to the Democratic Party. So abortion right, is the right. issue that keeps them voting, yeah. Yeah, and George is, I think George is right about that because yeah. that's – the abortion issue is like the one and only reason that I'm not aligning with Democrats because that's like the one thing I disagree with them as far as I know. Yeah. Right, but the thing is, for example I, – like, I, I mean I agree when I first came out to Los Angeles and there were a lot of vegans that were totally pro-choice and whatnot. And me personally, I feel that – Pregnancy termination should be in an emergency situ emergency situation only. It shouldn't be. Oops, I you know I did this and I got pregnant and now I'm gonna have to, you know, stop it. I, I mean, it's it's not a method of birth control. I mean, I believe in celibacy, but it, whatever. There's people that have different opinions, and so well, it, yeah, it's I, I not birth control. Like it is <laughs> killing. Right. And and, 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 and and my thing is, if you were a victim of some sort of assault, then I would hope that, you know, there are more modern means now. There's that pill that you could take and, you know, it stops the pregnancy quickly. Yeah, and so there's no neurological um, pain from the baby. You know, you just stop it. Now, I know that there's some people that they, they go into some sort of shock, especially if you're very young. Like, say you're 11 or 12, and you're pregnant, mm -hmm. and you don't know what to do. Maybe your dad did it or whatnot. And, you know, here, like, the baby's growing inside of you, and here you are, like, five, six months pregnant. Like, I don't know what to say in that case. I mean, I kind of think, yeah, you should have the baby at that point and give it up for an adoption. But if we're in the early stages and the baby's not feeling anything and there has been, you know, some tra something tragic, then, you know, then I, I, I'd have to say, yeah, even though I don't like it. Actually, could I say something about that? Um, actually, I do think, though, like if you're at a certain age and you're like in your 20s or something, I think there should be sort of like um, a punishment for it, like uh, where you pay extra money to get rid of the baby if it's at an early stage. 
I think, and I, I, said, I, think, I think we're getting to another topic because because I'm a yeah. totally pro choice here, and 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 we're gonna start debating in about well, a second. Yeah. So yeah, but so it, I don't know. This could go on for hours. Right. Yeah. We don't want to get sidetracked too on that topic, yeah. but it, it it was important in the context about the whole Republicans thing because no, it's I, I I do feel that because the Republicans make these pro life promises that they don't intend to keep. A lot of people vote Republican for that reason. That's what my mom said she did. That's what I, I did be previously. Um, <laughs> right. And and so I think that that one issue is such an emotional issue that that drives people towards the Republicans even though they wouldn't agree with the Republicans on anything else because they are rather anti-science. Can right. I ask – if? I, and I don't want to bring your family into this too much, but just a quick question. Did your family member, Chandler, believe that Trump was really pro-choice or was it about the Republican platform being pro-choice? Just want to know. What, what do you mean? Um, like, because actually, are you asking like what my mom, mom thought about the Trump thing or? Do you think that she thought that Trump was actually pro-choice or did she cast the vote because the Republican Party was pro-choice? Well, no, not, what's in, what's what's rather interesting. He's not pro-choice. He's, yeah, yeah, what's what's interesting about it is I I yeah, my mom actually didn't vote this election either. Um she oh, okay. she yeah, she, lately she's been kind of just, you know, uh, you know, not very optimistic about politics either. So, my mom and I are both kind of that way, but I'm just saying that in the past past we voted Republican because we both believed them to be more towards pro-life and that that was kind of all I knew back then, for sure. You know, guys, okay, like, because uh, Trump didn't even say pro-life till very, very late into his in, into his um, campaign, and right. I think in like June, it's possible he became a born again Christian, and that's when he started talking about this pro-choice and anti-gay marriage. Because months and months ago, he was all for the gays. Um, and I don't really believe that he became a born again Christian in the sense of him wanting to, if he even did, I think he just did it to get those votes. Absolutely. And that's the, that's the real sad thing. All he had to say was a couple key words, pro life and anti-gay marriage. And that got all these church people to vote for him. But do they really believe this man with all this hate speech well, oh, really yeah. believes In these things, the, yeah, the pro-choice. They, they, I mean, pro-life. They believe. They believe the Republican Party is sincerely wanting to end it. And you know, one one very strong piece of evidence that they're not is like they've had five Supreme Court justices for forty years. Well, uh, that that could have overturned Roe v. Wade any year. So that that tells you no. The Republican Party does not want to end. Uh, abortion. They want people to think they want to do that. But you know, more to the point, and like we could debate, you know, the legality of whether um, the abortion should be allowed. But I think we all kind of like agree that it's not really right. And so, like Chandler, um, Monique, the the, um, the podcast that you do on celibacy, I think is very important to this because I, you know, when I when I first heard about you know your your project and stuff, I was wondering. I said, you know, it just sounded so. So um, unnecessary or whatever. But then the more I thought about it, you know, basically, you know, um, people get together, you know, sexually for pleasure, which is different than getting together for procreation. So I think your message that that like and, and it, it wouldn't resonate with my um, generation because we're so corrupt, but with millennials and new generations to promote the idea that, yes, have sex, have as much sex as you want, whatever, ideally with with, uh, with a monogamous partner, you know, because of the STDs and all, but reserve the, the intercourse for procreation. I think that's the answer to this whole abortion thing. You know, if people begin to do that, then then the, the, the pregnancies won't occur to begin with. Yeah, I really appreciate just that protection. statement. Yeah, yeah, I just w wanted to say I really appreciate that statement, George, because I feel like there's not enough emphasis on preventing these situations in the first place. Because I, I've like you know I've never real like I've never I've always hoped that people could event the unwanted pregnancies in the first place without having to debate about whether or not to kill the children after they're conceived. 
you know? And that's the, what I'm hoping that that's where it goes, you know? I think it will. 30, 40 years down the line, you know, everybody will know that, like, you know, they, they can have multiple orgasms, they can have all the, the sex they want without have it having to be intercourse. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know. I'm not sure it about that. It still sounds strange to me. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't think that that'll ever no, the happen. Thing is, I mean, the thing is, I get, I get the point. Like, I mean, if you love someone, right, your affections get more closer and you get more intimate with each other and all that. But if you're just doing it because you've just met someone for the first time and you just want to like, just bunk up and all that, that's why I call it bunk up. Uh, if you just want to just do that just for the heck of it or the fun of it. Um, that, to be honest, uh, your mind is not really thinking out straight. You're just thinking with your dick, and you're not thinking with your heart and all that. And you need you need something, uh, some stable stability around that area, to literally think to yourself: Am I going into this relationship as a whole, uh, like two sides instead of one side, or is it just going to be a one-sided thing? What great! Point, I do want to say that as you get more intimate with someone different you know things can happen and whatnot but if we put our like philosophy to you know that this is really made for procreation and i'm not going to be a bible beater here because there's a lot of things i question about it but i think it might even be in there that it's really supposed to be for procreation another thing is you know there's ways of giving intimacy to your partner without um doing that and and you know there's that tantra i know that's just on spiritual energy or whatnot. So there's no reason that you have to have genital and genital contact in order to, you know, create the ultimate love for your partner. Because look at all the people that can't actually have intercourse. There's people that have dysfunctions and people that get older, you know, they still love each other just as much. And yeah. they and, and they're intimate. And a lot of times it's just society that's that's saying you have to do this in order to like show your love and you know for yeah, your marriage to it. work and and, and, and it, Vi Viagra trying to sell their next like pill. So well, let's be think clear about that it that way. It's just it's a different thought process. And just like veganism is a different thought process because we most of us has been been raised on meat. It's a tradition, you know, to put the turkey at the table. But if you real, some traditions aren't the best. And I, I think I think a better solution though is about a better solution is about. to uh, promote contraception and protection. Basically, I I I mean, that's that's where the problem is 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 young people you know, not using proper yeah. protection because they're not educated or, or they're yeah, pressured and things around. like that. So or some are even uh, worse than that. I mean, even if you do wear protection, sometimes it can split and then yeah. what happens then? Right. You end right. up that's having right. a baby on the way. Huh? So, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and see here, so here's that's why you wear two flipping condoms instead. At least the one will break. You still got the other ones. Double protection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I've said before, guys, if somebody does invent a form of contraception like an like an indestructible condom or whatever, that at least improves the situation um, because then at least you can prevent the unwanted pregnancy while people are still doing their weird stuff that I, I still wouldn't want to do it anyway. But, you know, that would solve the unwanted pregnancy problem. It, it really would. And But until such a solution – is available um celibacy just really lock is. it up <laughs> well you i mean you have things like iud's and then you have kind i mean you, you can you can you can use multiple options to make it pretty pretty impossible to actually get pregnant actually, hey, right. just get a chastity belt and just put a lock and key on it say it's not coming out <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you're since you're talking there. about contraception um there is one thing I want to mention regarding the California election in Los Angeles County. There was a proposition, uh, yes or no, um, it would be mandatory to make the pornography actors uh, wear condoms. And my God, it actually was voted down. <laughs> and I, I, I need to know why people would be so cruel to vote that down and i think it was mostly republicans i it was like a money issue type of a thing 
It got voted. It was like 55%, 45%, something like that. So let Does me anybody get... want to like make a comment on that? Because uh, I yeah, I would like to make a comment main. on that. So let me – so just let me get this straight. You're saying that the Republicans were against the, the – the, making the porn people wear condoms. That's what I read. Many of them were. Okay, yes. so let's just so get this. So I can this. Google so that right now, but okay, it was voted so, down. All right, so let's just get this straight. There are a bunch of porn watching Republicans who don't, for some reason, don't like to watch a porn with people having condoms. What else right. can you derive? No, that that's exactly what it is. <laughs> that's it's, what it's, I it's, thought. I mean, you have all these all these different types of you know wait, ways to that. People like to see certain things, and and that's not one of them, I guess. Republicans were watching pornography in Ohio during the Republican National Convention. I wrote, I read an article about it. There was a spike in pornography from that area when that was happening. Republicans, it's just they're really like so you know, upsetting like, how hypocritical they are. I mean, I don't like what the Democrats did to Bernie and whatnot, but it just it just seems like there's so much hypocrisy within this Republican party. Yeah, Jamie, you're typing. Republicans, like, if you want to like draw an analogy between them and evolution, they're kind of like the Neanderthals, you know, versus like the Democrats being the Cro-Magnon, the the you know the the advancement in evolution. The, the Republican Party, the, uh, any party who can vote for for people like Trump, they are just like not evolved. They're just you know they're somehow behind the rest of us. Yeah, you know, it is interesting about the hypocrisy there because I find there to be some weird hypocrisy in some things. Like Monique mentioned how the Republican thing has gotten mixed with the evangelical Christianity thing. And somehow that – and I've really had a hard time understanding that myself because it, it does seem like there's some contradictions. Um, like – and of course, of course, nobody. It seems like nobody can agree what Christianity is supposed to be, but there does seem to be that reputation of Republicanism to be about Christianity. And why is that? Is that really part of their platform? Oh, and and by the way, I'm so sorry, but to chime in, but I definitely was right. It says the California Republican Party opposed the measure. So there you go. Continue. You know, uh, Chandler, a lot of evil people hide behind God and religion. Yeah. You know, like they, they just they, they champion, you know, they, they, they say they go to church, they, they say they believe in God so they can do just like evil. And, you know, it's kind of like a protection thing. Yeah, that is kind of weird because, yeah, people who claim to be religious often do get away with doing all kinds of things that see if a oh. non-religious person did, did some evil thing, then people just get make a big deal out of it. And like, I, oh, I, you, I you also mean like the case. Go on. I also tend to think that the more uneducated, uneducated a person is, the more, you know, leaning towards religion they get. So, so you have, you know, people in in uh, areas where education isn't the, you know, the best, and then, you know, they they happen to be more religious because of that, and that, you know, leads to <laughs> the Republicans that are, are 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 as intelligent, right? Yeah, no, yeah they get brainwashed point. technically. Good point. Yeah, it's it, it's very very creepy how these things are mixed in though. But I those explanations do sort of make sense, you know. But one thing that I yeah I find it so odd that um, especially how the the other thing that the Republicans are famous for is being you know anti-gay and being against gay marriage, which is really a weird thing because I, I feel like that's a, a non-issue. I've never understood why people would be drawn to the to the Republicans for that reason. Unless there's some kind of Christian who really takes those Old Testament things seriously. So that may, maybe it's really part of the Christianity that's the anti-gay thing and that and yeah. that gets mixed in with Republican stuff. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think a, a lot of religion, you know, a lot of Christianity leads people to think that, you know, it's a sin. Mm. I'm back. As you could take out of the, the books of the gay people, to be honest, they, they, they can't have children. So in a way, like, it, I mean, if everyone turned gay, I suppose, yeah, you wouldn't be able to have children, would you? 
Well, you know what's funny about that, Anthony, is back when I was religious, I used to pray to God to make everybody gay so that there would be no abortions. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the way it is anymore. Not now. Now you have like uh, people with that freeze sperm and and go to banks <laughs> so so and, and then women have children for gay gay couples and things like that or women so. having 15 children yeah yeah i mean like the surrogates or something yeah, there yeah is, there's, see, there's there is something list. weird about it because what, what confuses me about that is that people who even who are are gay or otherwise sterile um for some reason, they so much want to have their own biological child that they'll pay extreme money to find a way, which is very, very bizarre. I mean, you, you guys see where I'm coming from. That That's a little bit bizarre that they would be willing to go through such lengths to procreate even when they – like that shows there's a separate desire people have to cro procreate that's even separate from their sexual orientation. Yeah, and so in the future, like, um, okay. In the future, it's going to be a whole lot easier too. I mean, they've already devised how to create uh, like sperm cells out of just someone's skin cells. So, so you can take someone's skin cell and actually create a sperm cell from it. It's it's crazy. I mean, yeah, like a Tesla baby or something. You're serious? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's just it's just a genetic thing. So you can. Yeah, in the future, people will just be won't need to have sex to have children. They'll be just, you know, uh, doing test two babies basically. So it's like that <laughs> cloning bold. thing that Jamie you was still talking don't have about. To. Don't you watch Jane the Virgin? What? Watch what? Jane the Virgin. Well, I've never heard of that. You didn't watch Jane the Virgin? It's a it's a sitcom on TV, and by accident she got impregnated. She went to get a doctor's <laughs> exam, and instead they put uh yeah Wait a minute. Oh. Okay, the life force in her if you're a virgin how would that work <laughs> right well she is a virgin they put they they put put the sperm bank they uh, her, her somehow <laughs> exactly and now well, it's okay. been a show for about two or three years it's uh i think it won an emmy or like that film i don't know if anyone's seen it that 40 year old virgin yes uh fucking hilarious film that is hilarious film but eventually, you know, I think he got it in the end. There's this so organism. Was... I don't know if it's a turtle. I forget what kind of an animal it is. But they are generally heterosexual. You know, like they, they need the couple for, for pregnancy. But once in a while, you know, you have these virgin births, which is like it, it opened my yeah. mind because like I was saying, like, I'm married. Or the, uh, right. But like, I mean, I mean, if it, if it can happen in the rest of that animal kingdom by some amazing genetic quirk and might actually be happen, be able to happen with human beings. Well, those creatures that are asexual, right? So they, yeah, they no, have... From how no, I understand I'm, it, I'm all, originally about... all life forms did reproduce asexually. There was asexual no, but guys, reproduction. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about organisms, animals that are generally, routinely, um, you know, um, that, that you need a couple for pregnancy. That you know. Yeah, that well, basically... some, sometimes you can have a genetic uh, thing where, where, where you have a hermaphrodite. So that's basically you have both sex organs. No, but this is different than that. This is like, again, this is like, you know, uh, the, the female of this species, again, you could just Google it, you know, virgin mm -hmm. birth, whatever. Or, um, they occasionally have birth without being impregnated. So like, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe Mary was a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, this yeah this podcast got a little bit um, off topic, <laughs> but this is yeah. fun, guys. This is this is seriously fun, guys. Mm -hmm. And on that note, um, I read something about bees. Apparently, unfertilized bee eggs hatch uh, hatch um, female or or some or what or no, it's it's they hatch male. Like drones are what hatch from unfertilized eggs. So there's like a sort of asexual reproduction that even bees do somehow. Hmm. Well, there you have it. How come there's so and many I, bees? Though? That's the thing. And I did read that it could happen that humans get pregnant without intercourse. Like just actually maybe being close to the person I also go on this site from time to time, realitywanted.com, and they were looking for people that had had um, virgin, 
virgin births. So there is an ideology out there that it could happen, actually. That's all I can say about that subject. Well, that's 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 a pretty stra strange thing. Yeah, um, I'm not so sure about that, but yeah. Um, so yeah, how did we get here? <laughs> yeah. Awkward. <laughs> yeah. A guy having a baby—that's an entirely different thing. Like, <laughs> you got to wonder if that's. Oh, a... it's gonna happen. <laughs> hey, Arnold hey, hey, Schwarzenegger did it okay. in that movie, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. It's it's bound to happen soon. The thing is, I think it's to do with the men's hips are too like, more like inwards, aren't they? Too wide or something, so they can't have the kids. But where's the kid going to come out? I mean, come on. There lies the ass. problem. <laughs> They'll work that out. <laughs> They'll probably squeeze him out of the backside or something. Uh, and he'll be, a thin, he'll be a thin, tall supermodel, the baby. Yeah, nicknamed Slenderman. <laughs> what? Oh man! Oh man! I don't know if you ever guys have watched that, uh, like played that game or something, or uh, seen it, heard it. But that big guy is in a black suit and he's got quite slender. Goes around and uh, scares the shit out of people. Definitely a good game, scary and all that. They call him Slender Man for a reason. Wow. <laughs> I, By the way, Jane, Jane the Virgin didn't win an Emmy, but it's nominated. So I'm just correcting myself for those who are listening. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So we started talking about like the, this election stuff, and then somehow we got on to all sorts of other weird stuff. Um, but that. Yeah, that's but because the, we were talking about applies, the Republicans. It all applies, Chandler. We, Jamie, you had mentioned something about the anti vaccination. I do want to mention something on that, and then you give me your more feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. I was at a vigil some months ago they, in, in um, Santa Monica, California, because they're making it mandatory for children to have vaccinations in order for them to go to school. And there's, there yeah. used to be a religious opt-out, opt and they've done away with that. But here's the thing. Um, it does seem like there are babies who suddenly become SIDS babies or autistic from uh, from vaccination shots. And there is a documentary called Vaxxed. And I did hear from people's mouths, and I really don't feel it's a conspiracy, that they watch their children be perfectly normal and go and get crippling side effects like shot after shot now back in the day children only had to have like 20 vaccinations something like that you know 70s mm -hmm. 80s and then it continually crept up until now there's about 75 different vaccinations and some of the ingredients in there are less to be desired so trump um i don't mm -hmm. know why he has made this um you know this disclosure his his opinion but it does seem like there it does kind of seem like a good thing that i should be on you know the pharmaceutical industry on vaccinating like too many vaccinations and what's in the vaccinations and how many there should be and at what age should a child have it maybe the child is too young because i I do feel that autism has occurred because of this. And one more thing, yeah, but maybe some of you saw this, but and and Melania Trump's wife said that she would sue if it wasn't taken down. But Rosie O'Donnell made a comment about uh, the son possibly being autistic because he was kind of twitching around and not smiling during his father's acceptance speech and um you know there are there are some signs from what i saw that look a little bit like that um god i hope i'm not sued now but who knows mm -hmm. I, I mean maybe trump maybe trump's seen this well, with his own try. eye so who yeah yeah they'll try i i mean i i don't know so what was what was your um what you you said the me measles or something? He said something about. Uh, he claimed that the measles uh, vaccine caused autism. But my my view on vaccines is this: George Ortega and Monique, listen. Whether or not it caused autism is irrelevant to me. 
the point of vaccines is to treat people or prevent diseases. You know what I'm saying? If it saves a life, then that's the main goal, right? Yeah, but what happens if it's killing them as well? Because there's been a few conspiracies where it's actually killed babies and all that through the vaccines. Right, but Anthony, like, look at the numbers. In other words, there's a lot of, like, of of just genuine mainstream Mm. medicine that if one is really highly allergic, whatever, they, they'll die. You know, they even like have this in the uh, you, commercials. Yeah. You, you know, have like, a higher chance of dying from not getting a, a vac- vaccination than you do uh, getting one. So, so even if there was some percentage, which there isn't, by the way, I, if, if, I would like if, to. If there's no hmm. peer-reviewed evidence that that it actually caused autism, well, for one thing. I mean, I, it, that's it's just basically personal um, speculation on that one, and well, that people are are just. J- jumping to conclusions but even if there was the statistics would be that it would be so much harmful not to give your children a vax exactly well guys i just have to say disease or or spreading diseases to others okay hey guys i just have to say that there is another documentary about the vaccines thing that i i saw that um called hear the silence um it was about andrew wakefield and his, his, he actually had the whole, whole theory behind why some of the people receiving the, um, the MMR vaccines, the muzzle, measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines, were having these reactions where they were becoming autistic, having autistic symptoms. And his suggestion wasn't necessarily to stop vaccinations, but to investigate it and space out the vaccinations between those types so they could identify more closely what may be causing it. And, it, and so I think there is a way to investigate and reform the way vaccines are done without having to say we, not, never to vaccinate. So I just want to throw that out there for people. They may be interested in that. But, yeah, maybe things can be done in a better way. You know, it, I'm, that's what I like to say about that. Yeah. But, I, but you know, people should go to, like, things like the Rational Wiki because Rational Wiki kind of kind – of, what, what, what they what they the purpose of them is is to uh, sh- show the problems with with these type of anti-vaccination movements and things like that and it's conspiracy theories and basically the anti-vax movement is a conspiracy theory it's it's not anything that has real uh, peer-reviewed evidence on trick do and they it, have a page on free will <laughs> that's a good question. Totally I don't should. know. Because, come on, there's not the, the slightest iota of evidence for that. <laughs> yeah, well, what's yeah. interesting is, like, yeah, now, yeah, I think Rational Wiki is good for some things, but I just want to say that I, I'm not going to necessarily discount all conspiracy theories. I really think that sometimes, mm-hmm. even though things don't have so-called peer-reviewed ev- uh, ev- evidence, they could, they could technically be true. If they are because true. There's, there's no, some money. There's no yeah. money behind it. You need money in order oh, to do... Good. The, the study. So, I mean, who's going to put the money okay. into it? Science, the whole point about science is is, is to, for verification. If you can't verify something that, I mean, p- people, scientists try to disprove other scientists and, and they, they win Nobel Prizes for doing so. So so if, if there's something that that big that they can, they can sh- actually show that, you know, uh, vaccinations cause autism, that would be a huge... Um, a huge thing for a scientist to prove they would that the scientists would 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 win a, a noble prize for that so but they're suppressed because of the not, because of the economic suppressed. system no trick yeah, they, are. they could do that with free will some some scientists would like you know prove free will doesn't exist but there's a lot of money that wants free will to exist yeah, I, I happen to just say that, you know, science um, – now, science itself is good, but scientists, on the other hand, can be corrupted just like politicians and religious people can be. And threatened. Oh, and threatened. In regards to the free will topic, like, like you, if you notice that the, sci- the scientists that actually do the free will thing, like, like the neuroscientists, they're always the free will skeptics. So you have you have the neuroscientists who do the the bat, the bat experiments and things like that, and it always leans towards no free will usually. I so. you said just a minute ago about oh, where's all the money going to come through uh, to do all this? Well, the thing is, they could get the money from where all the other money's disappeared. There's a lot of money has been disappearing in different countries, and maybe they've got it. 
You don't know. The mm-hmm. government may be hiding, hiding all that money away from the, the rich. Have it all. Yeah, all the rich. <laughs> oh anyway, yeah. I, I, I shouldn't go on a diatribe about conspiracy theories, but you know the anti-vax thing. I, I it's it's important because uh, you know if you if you don't vaccinate your ch- child, that child could you to get a disease and, and die or that child can spread diseases to other people so so it's it's a thing that that isn't doesn't just affect your child but but all the children that it goes to school with basically yeah well, the so that's yeah, why well, here's an it, interesting that's idea. why they make it illegal or they make it they make it so you have to have a vaccination well, because it agreed. affects not just your own child yeah you know? well here's an in, here's an interesting i thought, find myself Rick. agreeing with chuck slattery because whether or like i said before whether or not it causes autism is irrelevant. The fact is, if it saves a life, it should be done. Right. Well, yeah. here's a so. question. Here's some food for thought, guys, that I like to throw out because so. it really, it, I really do need to be going to bed, and I self take my shower. This has been, man, this has been crazy. I was not expecting us to go on this long, but I have totally enjoyed this. But here's some food for thought. So just a final. Is it argument. vegan? Is it vegan food for thought? <laughs> yeah, I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, um, but I just I wanted to think about it. What if people debated the vaccination issue, and then you had some people who were pro-choice in the sense thinking that each person gets to each parent gets to choose whether a child is vaccinated, or, and others think it should be mandatory, and others think it should be banned. So you would have three camps about the vaccination subject, just like we tend to have with. Um, with abortion you know and that would get real that would turn into a heavy topic might be good for a future topic (laughs) yeah 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 and like i said it 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 ties into a number of different things like like you you think that they're making a choice for their own child but they're really not they're making a choice for every everybody that that child connects to you know that child goes to a public school they're they're making choices for those children in the in those public schools so yeah and that's that's why people need to be aware of how everything is connected in the cause and effect thing there because yeah everything is what that affects everyone else so yeah that might be a good future topic just throwing that out there but I, but we really need to close this episode and i can back it up and probably get it up tomorrow <laughs> so um let's see did did you want me to do the outro or should we have monique do it since she did the intro well, I'll do it, but does everybody maybe have one last final sentence or comment and keep it concise? Because um, my, my comment would be go to bernieforpresident.returntheburn.com and sign that petition to get to the electors, because I still have that hope that Bernie could slide in before December the 19th. That's my final comment. Next. <laughs> my I comment. Think- oh, go ahead, George. The election was rigged. Trump should be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> My comment is: Let's hope Jill is able to uh, show that uh, that Clinton got more votes in the swing states and uh, revert to Clinton. But uh, if that doesn't happen, we have to live with four bad years and let's vote uh, Bernie in uh, after four years. Let's see, Anthony and WSD, do you have um, final statements? Uh, yeah, I got one actually. Uh, yeah, this one's to Hillary Clinton actually. Make sure you don't have a Christmas turkey over Christmas and choke on the bone. <laughs> and actually, the make sure you put your false teeth in. <laughs> and WSD, what do you say? WSD, you there? Can I, give you some, I, can I give you some ice on those burns? <laughs> what? Can I give you some ice on those burns? <laughs> oh, I get it, because feel the burn. Yep, and what <laughs> Anthony said, too, but yeah. <laughs> okay, and I have one, you should, one final You should thing. join the Bernie Think Tank. I like that one. Yeah, in, yeah. Th- in that case, I have one more final statement. Pink... Fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. <laughs> you and your unicorns, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fluffy ones. And if you'd like to volunteer for that cause or the Bernie cause, 
leave your comment here. <laughs> I, I think the unicorns uh, is more likely. We'll, we'll go with the unicorns. Unicorn for president. <laughs> unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you for listening to us we hope you enjoyed this episode and has it's given you some uh, raw vegan food for thought and uh, if you'd ever like to be a guest again uh, all you have to do is leave a comment uh, we would love to hear from you uh, I've been your guest host Monique Lukens along with let's go around ring around the rosy uh, Anthony Bishop Chandler Klebs George Ortega Jamie Soden Next lottery. WFD time. Yeah. All right. And this has been the Impersonal Opinion Podcast. Recorded on December the 4th, 2016. Thank you oh, wait, so much. I, I think you said it wrong. So let's start start from the beginning. Uh, <laughs> take take three. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, it's you, take you five because you're actually the line. Should I be take five? <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Monique. That was good. Yeah, that was good. <laughs>